What up though, it's your girl Philomena and it's been a minute since I checked in. I got a face full of fresh makeup, so I thought this would be a good opportunity. Um, I've missed you guys, haven't given you an update, life has been in the way, but in this episode we're going to catch you up and we're going to talk about some great things, some great things that are coming up, but first, we already know what time it is. As you can see, I've already had a little bit of my clothes, but cheers, here we go. So, um, it's been a minute, life has been in the way. Uh, I know everywhere across the world we are still dealing with COVID. Um, I have been involved in some COVID awareness um, endeavors here and um, that has taken up a lot of my time. I have forsaken my love of vlogging and I apologize. But also we've been on lockdown, restrictions, so keeping safe is more important than anything. But I'm back, I'm back and I am ready for the last few months of 2021. I'm hoping in 2022 we'll be in a better space worldwide so we can travel, connect, but thank the Lord for technology that we're still able to communicate, still able to see what we all are doing in all places of the planet. Um, I hope all my followers have been well. Uh, so I just recently came back from Cape Town, South Africa, recently as in last week or this week. Um, and it inspired me for a Real Talk with Philomena episode. Um, first time in Cape Town and oh my God, it was an amazing, amazing trip. Uh, I haven't had a real vacation in a long time. Love all my people in the US, but that's not really vacation. That's like visiting this person, and that person, which is amazing. I love my friends and family, but this was the first proper vacation I've had in a very long time. One of my childhood friends got married. Um, congrats to Serge and Hanan. Beautiful nuptials in a beautiful place with a beautiful couple. Um, the trip was everything I needed and more, except for the cold. You know, got a lot of messages, you know. I'm from Detroit, we all know this, you know, what up though. Uh, but now I will say, we all know it's so cold and deep. It's a different kind of cold though. Um, and then also I've been living in Liberia what, for five years now and you know, your body adjusts. So I feel like I'm right in the middle. Um, and I don't have any clothes for any type of weather, only Liberian weather. Um, so I knew it was gonna be a little bit chilly in uh, Cape Town. But what I wasn't really ready for was the mountain wind. Oh my goodness, y'all. Listen, I have fully... I was dying. It was about 55, 60 degrees the whole time I was there. During the day, it was great sunshine but as soon as that sun went down my goodness but we stayed in an amazing airbnb um in camps bay right off the water uh i mean views for days and i will be doing a two-part vlog on cape town so look out for that. So many goodies on there. Um, but, you know, this subject of traveling on the continent came up. And, you know, I had the vision when I moved back that I was going to visit this place and that place and that place. Well, one, it's very expensive to travel on the continent. Two, the flight routes make absolutely no sense. Three, COVID, right? So, um... <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of factors that are working against me, but I am determined to get the traveling bug back in my system and I'm going to share these travels with you. So going back to this trip, um, much needed. Uh, I had to save a lot of money. 
Um, it wasn't cheap and it wasn't easy. So I traveled to Cape Town through Kenya Airways, which I love Kenya Airways. It is a partner with Delta. I was a Delta Sky Miles member. I am a Delta Sky Miles member, even though I don't even, uh, you know, qualify for silver anymore because, you know, there are not that many flights here. Um, and I usually fly with them to Ghana and other places. But Kenya's flight route <laughs> to Cape Town. Uh, so we left Liberia, fly about an hour, 45 minutes to Accra in Ghana, uh, sit on the tarmac for an hour, people offload, onload, um, then we fly from Accra to Nairobi, Kenya. Same thing, you know, we were on the tarmac. Um, actually, no, we weren't on the tarmac, we switched planes on the way, and we changed planes, and then we flew from Nairobi to Victoria Falls in Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe finally to Cape Town. About two days of travel. This is what traveling on the continent feels like. I don't even know. It, it's been a long day. It's been a long day. And I feel like, yeah. Um, or close to two days. Um, so imagine the time, the effort, and then the flight from Victoria Falls to Cape Town was tiny. Um, but it, and I, will, I will say this, no matter where I've been in the continent, um, no matter how many days from the US or whatever it may be, it's always worth the journey once you arrive. You know, I, I brought this up on my Instagram and it, uh, it brought up an interesting subject. A lot of people have this theory about colonization, right? Um, how the colonizers, you know, um, are still prevalent and we know that, right? We have a lot of territories that are still British, uh, Portuguese, whatever it may be, French, um, Liberians even, you know, we have some allegiance to America. Um, but I, it got me thinking, right? Is it, is it a design of um, to keep us away from each other? Because I, you know, I, I actually got an award recently in Ghana. That was my first travel um, to. I guess I should update you guys about that. Um, my first time in travel in two years. Um, I got invited to the African Advancement Awards in Accra, Ghana. Um, it was an amazing experience. Um, I was able to speak on a panel. Uh, about technology with like-minded um, Africans from all over the world. But you know, it's always great when you can take something, a piece of whatever your life is and show people. Showing is believing, right? We're, like you said, we're in the age of nobody wants to read, everybody wants to see it, and they want it to be done in one minute or less. Um, great experience. Also, our Vice President, the Honorable Jewel Howard Taylor was also in attendance. She spoke on a panel as well. Uh, she was awarded and she received her honorary doctorate at the event. It was a very, very, very amazing event. Um, and I'm honored and proud to uh, have gotten an award. Maybe I should, should I bring it to Chacho with you guys? Okay, hold on. Okay, I'm back. Can't believe I forgot that I should share this with you guys. So here is the award. Um, I want to thank all my followers. <laughs> so this was a great award uh, and it was great to be recognized for my efforts. I was awarded for creativity and enterprise by the Africa Advancement Forum. Um, it was just really great to be recognized. It was great to be appreciated. It was great to be in a space with like-minded Africans. And this is going back, sorry. No. Um, <laughs> uh, it was great to be around people and I, I remember one of the last pieces I said on the panel was, you know, the, I think the last question they asked me is, um, what would you like to see, you know? Um, the theme was the Africa we want. And I, I had the ending question on my panel. We were running out of time too and I said, you know, what I would like to see is a space where 
African creatives could come together easily and share ideas and how powerful would that be, right? Uh, all across the continent and so many people in the crowd agreed. There was uh, a lot of nods and agreements. And then it really just brought you back to this idea. What if we had easier ways to connect? They wouldn't be able to stop us. So are they trying to stop us? I don't know. I don't know what the truth is. Um, but I know for myself um, and what I want to do and what I want to see um, on this continent, I made the mental decision that I was going to travel more in Africa. Um, I've done the U.S. back and forth. Um, even Europe, I mean, I would like to visit places, but I'm really interested in seeing new places on the continent. Um, and what would that mean if we had easier routes? What if I didn't have to fly <laughs> all across to get to this destination? Um, so it, it really speaks volumes to where we are in the world, right? Um, we're all trying to be connected, um, but we can't connect, whether it be COVID, finances, and it's not cheap either. Just so you know, the flight route I was talking about, $1,300 for that ticket. It's the equivalent of flying to the U.S. Tickets are usually anywhere from $1,300 to $2,000 or more, depending on the time of the year that you go. So you start to weigh the options, you know. Do I go to America? Do I go to Europe? Do I go to, you know, Cape Town? Do I go to Kenya? Do I go to Ethiopia? Um, and I'll say this for all of you who are wanting to travel. It's a sacrifice to travel on the continent, but it's a worthy sacrifice. You know, when I have friends who want to come visit, I've had so many friends who inquired about coming, but those who have actually taken the step, one, and then my best friend, Sunny, I think she's gonna come eventually. You know. Sunny, where you at? <laughs> um, there's a lot of deterrence, you know? Um, and I think that if you are truly a global citizen, you have to step out of the box. It's really worth it. Um, I hope that before I die in my lifetime, that travel will get easier um, on the continent. But I am willing to sacrifice those things. I will pay for the tickets. I will get all the vaccines. I will go on these crazy, crazy flight paths to make it where I need to go. Um, I know I've been in and out up and down with the vlog I am really trying to stay on board and on task from here on out again COVID has affected all of us and I think we all need to be um, understanding and um, lenient on each other you know we have all been through a lot we are all still going through a lot we're all still start trying to recover um, so I hope you guys forgive me because every time I post something I have a few people saying where have you been I miss you I miss me too um, but you know, sometimes we have to align ourselves with things that are more important. Um, again, I've been working with COVID awareness, vaccine awareness. That is important to me. It may not be important to you, um, but it's taken uh, first place in my life recently. But now we are balancing out. We had a very big surge in June um, and it really scared the crap out of everyone. A lot of people close to me or people that I knew passed away um, from the Delta variant. Um, but we were able to flatten the curve very quickly. Numbers are good here in Liberia. So if you're looking to visit, um, I think we'll be open and ready. Um, but don't bring your COVID here. Don't bring your variants. Keep Liberia COVID free. Um, but yes, I am looking forward to the end of the year. We have some surprises coming. So stay tuned. I may or may not be Starting something cool and new. <sighs> you know, just 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 stay tuned and watch. Um, we are entering dry season, which is my optimal time to vlog to show you the beauty of Liberia. Um, I continue to stay committed to sharing the positive stories, um, talking to Liberians who are doing the damn thing everywhere, here, there, and everywhere. Um, thank you all for being patient, waiting for me, um, and stay tuned. I'm really excited for the last part of the year, and I'm going to cheers, finish this up. Uh, stay tuned. 
South Africa Cape Town vlog is dropping very soon. I think you guys are gonna love it. Um, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you soon.